If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me, if you will, to the Gospel of Matthew. And I'd like to read to you the words from which we've chosen our subject. And by the way, our message will be in two parts. This is the first part. The second part, the Lord willing, will be next Lord's Day evening. In Matthew, beginning at verse 36, chapter 24, our Lord said, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But... As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then I'd like you to turn, if you will, to the 17th chapter of Luke, verses 26 through 30. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Well, since our Lord refers to the days of Noah, we ought to take a moment to see what the days of Noah were like. And so turn to the sixth chapter of Genesis, verses 1 through 13. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all whom they choose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants, Nephilim, in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same became mighty men who were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Our wonderful Lord, as we come to thy word tonight and we sense so realistically that we are living in apocalyptic times, how we pray that we shall be like the men of Issachar who having an understanding of the time in which we are living will be able to tell those who want to know what to do. 
How we ask that the Spirit of God will speak to us very personally in the message of this night to challenge us with our responsibility as those who, like Noah, have found grace with thee and who walk with thee. Hide the self-life of the one who ministers in the message in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Very obviously, our Lord said that the last days previous to his return, and there's no debate about this whatsoever, it's very plain, it's very clear, would be similar to those of the antediluvian civilization, quite possibly the Mesopotamians, that in the interest of unborn posterity and the coming of the Son of God into the stream of history by the miracle of incarnation, were necessarily judged and blotted out in a great worldwide catastrophe. When we study the Word of God, we discover that our Lord never did say that the world would get morally and spiritually better, but he did tell us that in iniquity, in sensual perversion, in fearful wickedness, in godlessness, it would finally reach the place where it would at last parallel those awful and awesome conditions that were extant in the days of Noah just before the great water judgment of the flood. And to that, Luke adds that our Lord said that those situations that existed at the time of Sodom and Gomorrah and God's rescue of Lot would be the conditions that once again would be paralleled and even as the judgment of sulfuric flames engulfed Sodom and Gomorrah and all the cities of the plain, so we are to understand that God is a God of judgment as well as a God of love. These descriptions of the antediluvians and Sodomites are, of course, for the purpose of giving us an accurate description of the conditions that will exist in society at the time of our Lord's return. Interestingly, before the judgment came in the two instances cited, society was characterized as being humanistic, materialistic, corrupt, immoral, perverted, violent, demonic, godless. Though these words might describe a godless society in any particular period of history, they seem to be especially in evidence in our time. 